Well, hi there. It amazes me you're all here tonight. Yeah. You thought I was referring to traffic and parking. Um, I'm referring to the fact that you're all the fortunate descendants of people who survived epidemics. Epidemics. You probably know some. SARS, Zika, Ebola. You've read about them in the news. You may have heard about some historical ones. Polio, smallpox, chickenpox, influenza. The first ones scientists are trying to develop cures for. But with polio, with chickenpox, smallpox, influenza, we already have vaccines. Now, what is an epidemic? Oh. To paraphrase what the Center for Disease Control says, an epidemic is a time when a lot of people get sick in a specific area. That's okay. I'd add that a lot of people can also die. And a lot of those people are children. <clears throat> I study epidemics in a um, small town in Italy on the Adriatic coast. Picture perfect. I've been studying this place for a long time. Initially, I started looking at data in the 19th century, and I collected death records for everybody who died between 1810 and 1901. Their name, their sex, their age, and the day they died. And I found there were trends. And then late last year, I got a call from a friend in Windsor and said, hey, have you heard about these new books? The Genetic History of Peskogee. Oh my. 850 pages. 19,000 people. All arranged in alphabetical order. <laughs> this was going to be a job. I, my copies are just dog-eared. They're delightful. So I was able to construct a population and variations in population over time, from the year 1600 to the year 1900. We're going to look at that. I've smoothed this out a lot for you. I've eliminated most of the little blips, just leaving the major catastrophes. Let's start in the early 1600s. Many of you have heard of plague. You may have heard of the Great Black Death in Europe in the 1340s. Well, plague continues to wash across Europe for 300 years after that. And plague comes to Italy twice, around 1628, again around 1656. And the population in Pescaji drops dramatically. Population in 1600 was around 1,100 people, 380 nuclear families. By the 1660s, the population was down to around 500 people, and 323 of those families had disappeared. The number of births in the 1620s averaged about 44 per year. By the 1660s, it was less than nine per year. But populations are resilient. New families move in, old families start reproducing, and by the 1770s, the population is up to about 1,300 people. Just in time. I'm not sure if it was plague again. I'm not sure if it was smallpox. I'm not sure exactly what it was. There's no, there's no references that, that I was able to find that had anything about it. But 10% of the population dies in six months. That's pretty dramatic. Well, over the next 60 years, more people move in, population grows, we get to 1836, and pandemic cholera arrives. Yay! Another drastic event. 
Pandemics are epidemics of a global proportion. They're all over the place. 10% of the population dies, most of them in three months. Absolutely incredible. What you have to realize is that in the 1770s, if you were born then, you had less than a 40% chance of making it to be a year old. Looking back at 1777, life expectancy from birth was 17 and a half years. Far cry from the 80 years you're all expecting. By 1837, those numbers improve, but not dramatically. The population starts to grow again. By 1846, we're pushing 2,000 people. Actually, I counted. It was closer to 2002. <laughs> the first major influenza pandemic hits. The flu. Well, how bad can that be? Well, in the first nine days of the epidemic, 22 people died. 20 of those people are under the age of 10. By two months, well over 100 people have died. 90% of them, children. Now, let's put this in a modern context. In my hometown of Ann Arbor, this would be the equivalent of having 12,000 people die in 60 days. That's 200 people a day. You would all know people dying daily. But the population rebounds again. We get into the whole 19th century. Turns out there were 19 epidemic events. Those events saw typically 3 to 5% of the people dying, plus the two big events. And it doesn't stop there. 1901, an unknown epidemic comes through. People start dying. But finally, I can show you the picture of a survivor. The man on the left is Michele Bellotti. He was eight years old when the epidemic hit. His father died. The last of his four brothers died, none of whom reached the age of two. He was very sick, he survived, and he emigrated to North America. This is him in his 80s. The little girl to the left is his great, great granddaughter. Coincidentally, she's my granddaughter. And he's my grandfather. And she has advantages. Because she has access to clean water. It's less likely she's going to come down with some cholera-like disease. She has access to a reliable, Food sources, people who are healthy and eat well are less likely to get sick. She has access to modern medicine. This includes antibiotics, and she has access to vaccinations. The fear that I have right now is that there's a lot of misinformation going around about antibiotics, and frankly, there's a lot of lies going around about vaccinations. You have to remember, in the 19th century, 10% of every child born died within a year. 43% did not reach their 16th birthday. So the question you have to ask is, do we want to return to a time of epidemics when children were dying, or do we want to take advantage of modern medicine and watch our children and grandchildren thrive. Thank you. <laughs>